cardinal points, and we have the, I don't know what the other non cardinal points are called. Bishop points. The bishop points. Yeah. Hmm. So, what I want you to do is I want you to throw 10 shots. Okay, you see how that place going forward. And flat snap. That's all these are. Flat snap. Moving away. So remember when we throw 90% of the time anyway? Flat snap. Why do we throw a flat snap? The most economical, the quickest shot that we can actually throw. And the way that we set, have our rule set set up, uh, it, it, it is the shot that's going to be available to you the most time. Okay. So we're doing this, okay? Now, why do we do this? Okay. Okay. You think, well, this is really basic stuff. All right. I'm going to show you from a boxing perspective. Okay. So for boxing, okay. So if we go left jab, right hook, step off, right hook again. Okay. What happens is, is when I throw that shot, you're going to free me. So I throw it, I step off on it, I throw it again. You wouldn't think that that slight change is going to make a world of difference, but it does. It's con completely different angles for them. They are conditioned to block things that are coming straight at them, not at angles. This is for any martial sport. This is why they have to pay to step around people. This is why they have you when you throw a left hook. This is why they have you step around a guy when you're going to kick him. This is, this is why they do front kicks and why, why they do horse kicks. Okay? If you really think about it, the shot's coming from the same exact perspective. But it's just enough variation to where your normal angles are blocking, especially when you have experienced fighters. It, they're conditioned to block in very specific manner. So if I'm blocking here, and that shot would never come here, and now it's coming here, even though it looks the same, I do just a slight motion, because the further it gets away from me, the, the steeper the angle becomes, it's now success. So this is why we do the compass point, okay? So we step in, and then you got to hit them all. And that's a lot, a lot of flat snaps. All right, that's a lot of flat So, the next thing is, when we're doing that, at C range, Field, like 
we just stay in the military. We, we don't play in the field. We play in the bank. We don't play in the field. We play in the field. That's what we do. We spend the time training. We go to that practice part. When we go to the evaluation part, we pass the test. <coughs> so, that's really it, guys. Uh, one final thing that I want to talk about is something that you like. I'm going to touch on a little bit. Diet and exercise. If you put crappy stuff into your body, your body will let you know and you perform yourself. I want you all to exercise because I already told you I'm self. Take care of yourself, okay? Uh, there's a lot of great simple things that are out there that don't demand a tremendous amount of time that are highly effective. There's all kinds of really good workout programs if you don't want to build one on your own. You can go buy DVDs. You have lots of, lots of good stuff that's out there. Activities that work best for this type of martial art are things that deal with explosive types of training. You don't have to run six or eight miles a day, okay? <coughs> but you have to make sure that you're doing enough cardio that you're going to benefit. Ten-yard sprints are a really good activity for what we do. Anybody, you know, anybody has ten yards that they can do. Do 20 or 30, okay? I tend to do a combination of both. I do sprints and I, I do running, but kettlebell training is awesome. You can do sledgehammer workouts where you're hitting uh, a, a tire. Just be careful that the hammer doesn't bounce back. But I would know that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> you can do same bag training, which is in burlap. It's a 40 pound bag. Taking that thing up and throwing it. And I mean, you're just all different kinds of ones, you know? You know, you can do P90X. You can do Insanity. You can do CrossFit. You can do, there's all kinds of stuff. But if you just do straight weight training, you're going to be in trouble, guys. Straight weight training won't get it down to this. But weight training is good. You need some of it. But what I'm saying is, it's just like anything. There's, there's a balance there. So, uh, creatine is not bad for you if...
Bad, 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 bad. Okay. But beyond technique, as far as hurting yourself, why is that bad? We talked about it earlier. Why is that bad? Leads off energy. Right? See it coming? Leads off energy. It's slow. So, we don't do the big out and around. Okay? Because remember what we talked about? We want the shot being as flat as possible, as quick as possible. You'll notice when I'm fighting, 95 to probably 98% of my shots start all the same way. So that means from your perspective, because I'm going with a still hand and still mind, everything looks the same to you. You do not know where I'm throwing. And because I've trained myself to, if I start a shot and you move to block it, I can do it. It compounds the problem for you. So, that is a long way of saying a wrap shot should look like a flat snap. This is a flat snap. Okay? This is a wrap shot. Okay. All I did was I started that plane. Okay? If I start it, I start it and I'm flattening it out. Okay, I'm getting sore. Horizontal to the ground. Okay. We're going to start it. And we're just going to turn it over. Okay. We're just going to turn it over. Yeah. This also goes for an unoffing. Okay. So if we're going to throw an offside, an offhand. Okay. We we'll take it. And when it makes the day, we're greeting, greeting people. All right. When they come to the restaurant. And they say, man, we've been in the car for three hours. You guys got a bathroom? And you say, the bathroom's over there. Okay, that's all we're doing. All right, so we're starting here. That's all we're doing. Take our hands. We're not doing this. That's just over there. Same thing for the next step. That's all we're doing. We're reaching out the control. Okay, and okay. We move our feet. We don't bring the hand out and around. Okay, your rotator cuff, guys. Super, super, super delicate piece of machinery. Okay. Amazing piece of equipment you need to take care of it. Okay. See? They do that all day long, guys. So if we generate power, not in our arm and our shoulder, if we generate it by the hip, I'm gonna do it like everybody else. I like to wear the, what's happening in the news. It's all there. Core muscle. That's another reason why we work out. Most of your power is your core from your core. Come from your core. So what's core? Core is pec, abdomen, glutes, quads. Okay? This is just hanging on to it so it gets to where it's supposed to be. Okay? These are your weapons platform. These put you into a position to kill. See how much time, how quick I got it over. Okay? So what happens is, is I don't spend a long time in my transition and I'm fighting it and it's getting out there and I'm having a hard time hanging on. So now I'm actually fighting the blow and I'm pulling the energy off of it to try to get it over. Okay. Now we're tearing our body up, the terrible execution of, of transferring force into our palm. So that's, that's how we're we beat a person. You put enough energy in there. So, and it's here, it's just bang. I can still control it. Okay? Uh, while we're doing this, I don't like to spend a lot of time on this. this as far as how to throw shots, there's one other thing that I want to address where it turns out is that, that we taught our people to do that's incorrect. This is essentially the thrust version of our rep. That's how we teach people to thrust. Okay. That is a tremendous strain again on the rotator cuff and on the elbow. Now, get your sword out. Okay. 
Now, when I profit you, just knock it off once. Don't have to do it hard. Okay. Do you see how out of control I am? Do you think I have any other options once I do this? No, I'm going to throw a flash out. I'm going to throw a flash out often and, and do anywhere I want. All right? Now, if we thrust with our feet and our core instead of our arms, now we have a tremendous amount of control and a tremendous amount of power over thrusting the individual. Okay, all I did was drop it down. I closed with my feet. All right, you see where everything is? You see how everything's in line? There's no torquing on me. If he, if he, if he redirects the shot, see how I still have control of it? I'm not out of position. I'm not doing any of this far-reaching slapping motion. Okay. Guess how we get good at this? Anybody? Oh. Hey! There we go. Anybody have any questions about any of that information? Anything? How do you get power on that it, It's just like when you're throwing a flat snap. Instead of hitting with this, all we're doing is we're turning it over. Okay. So it's still the same motion. So it's still coming from the hips. So just like we would with the flat snap, all I'm doing is I step through with the back foot instead of keeping the, this foot stiff. You, you see where I'm going? All right, I keep the, the foot still on a flat snap. All I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing. And I just step through to accommodate the finishing of that, that shot coming around. Because you are bringing it around. You are, you know, you are bringing it around. But we're not bringing it in this huge arc. What we're doing is we're, we're making that arc very, very, very small. Okay. And that's how you're, and you have to practice it. You have to. Because you're going to go home and you're going to throw it and you're going to do it wrong. But once you start doing it right, you're going to feel better. Your body's just, oh man, that's so much better than my elbow. So much better than my shoulder. So there is a certain amount of pain that you're going to go through while you're perfecting the correct technique. But I mean, that's pretty much like any train your body to train it into new techniques. All of this stuff, all of this stuff that we talked about, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. It's going to take you a minimum of three minutes, three months, a minimum of three months to employ. Three to six months where you really start saying, okay, yeah, this is, this is really starting to make sense because you're going to be uncomfortable. What's happening is you're training, you're, tra you're training your body and your mind to think in a different way. And you're going to find yourself out there thinking, thinking, thinking. Now, you come to the, the essentially, it's a sparring. What we're having this afternoon is a sparring. But what we do is, is we open the sparring session with a training method, okay? That's going to make a lot of this sense or make a, lot of, make a lot of this make sense to you, okay? You are going to be a coach. You're going to be accountable for the information that we covered today and giving feedback to the, uh, the opponent. Because remember, we had two goals when we started out. To want to be the best fighter that you can possibly be, but also to be a good coach. And by being a better coach, it will make you twice the fighter you are. Because what happens is, is it makes you think about fighting in a very different way. Because you have to know that information as a coach. Because people are coming to you to say, well, well, what's this or what's that? And you need to be able to look at them and evaluate. And what you can do at home is you're probably already doing it anyways. You're going on YouTube and watching fighting. Approach it from this perspective. Watch, pull up any fighter. It doesn't matter who it is. You say, there's a range issue there. There's a shot selection. And you need to think about when we identify these these favorites, identify the deficiencies you're going through. Alright? Now what's the next step? We can't just identify the deficiencies. How do we correct those deficiencies? Well, any fighting deficiency that we have that I've seen so far can be corrected by one of those drills that we've talked about today. Anyone. I mean different tools for different things. But if you think about it in that regard, what happens is, is you start approaching fighting in a way that you got probably less than 1% of the fighters out there that actually approach fighting that way. Well, I'll 
they buy two or three percent of their time are, are first buying that. Okay. And when you do that, that puts you so much further ahead. I got a guy. I don't know judo. I don't know nothing about judo. Great. Works with no one. Started coming to fight practice. He's interested. I watch. He's like, hey, check out some videos of me and judo. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you got a range issue there. I said, your targeting sucks. Because you're just, you're not setting up any of your throws or your, your, your trips. What are you doing? I was like, well, how long have you been doing this? I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, then how do you know this? I'm fighting, fighting. And I said, what? I said, yeah. I said, I used to box. And, you know, I know hand to hand for being in the military, you know, but it's, you know, it's not, you know, it's not a real discipline. It's just, you know, it's down and dirty to get done. You know, it, it's really a lot of the two mental approach and what's going on. All good fighters are the master of those things that we talked about. Okay, range, timing, you know, target selection, uh, shot selection, uh, you know, recovery, and, and, and your discipline. Your discipline. Your discipline. Your discipline. Your discipline. Your discipline. So, that's it, guys. If you don't have any other questions, you've been here a long time. I appreciate it, uh, your time. And again, cannot stress to you enough that if you have the opportunity to spend time with Jim Sean, you must. Uh, we're working on getting him here, actually, in the Indianapolis area soon. He's just busy because he just won the uh, crown.